What is going on? So far, so good, listeners. Yes, yes. It's really good to, you know, talk to you guys again. And it's uh, always good to hear back from you. So hit us up on sofarsogood.podbean.com. Let's get into it. So far, so good. But to start off this episode, I do need to tell you something. You need to tell me something privately. There's an update. On? On the world. Okay. So... One of our, well, I don't know about you because you're a bit of a dog, the boys, but <laughs> one of our top video games has a new release out. Really? Have you heard of it? Wait, did we discuss this? No. Oh my God. I don't know which one this is. Should I tell you what it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, tell me the platform. Is it PlayStation? Is it Nintendo? Is it Xbox? Is it PC? Uh, it's handheld device. DS. Yeah. What? Is there a new Pokemon? Yep. What? Again? Which one? Sword and Shield. <laughs> they're running out of combinations. They've I know, run of, They've run out of colours, <laughs> they've run out of gems. Now they're going on to objects, Sword and Shield. Uh, no, nah, before but, this was Sun and Moon, right? Yeah, which you didn't play. I, I will play it. I which I bought it. for your birthday and you didn't play I will play it. Guys, I'll send everyone my DS code so we can trade Pokemon as well. Oh man, as soon as Sword and Shield comes out, I'm getting it. So what is, uh, what's the new thing with that? Well, I don't know anything about it whatsoever. I just saw it. But it's definitely released or it's just announced? No, no. It's it's announced. Oh, it's announced. well, well, well. Yeah. So you need to get on to playing Sun and Moon. Finish did, that first. Did they show like the two uh, legendaries on the cover? Did they show the cover? Yeah, but I didn't look into it whatsoever. Ah, uh, fair enough. I fair just enough. saw the announcement and went, whoa, and then got back to what I was doing. Because <laughs> you're such a busy man. <laughs> That's right. I am very Not watching busy. Game of Thrones. Exactly right. Well, uh, dude, what do, you, what do you usually have for breakfast? Um, I normally have a couple of pieces of toast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about yourself? I don't usually have breakfast. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You know because... they say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Yeah, but that's only... What are you only... doing with your life? That's only if you have three meals a day. Then they say breakfast is the most important one. But okay. what if you only have two? Well, then... Yeah, that's not very healthy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can still have three, but I'll just start from lunch. And I'll go lunch, mid-lunch, dinner. So... That's three meals. Yeah, but then... So why not just have breakfast? Because when I wake up in the morning, I don't feel hungry straight away. Yeah, but that's because you don't eat breakfast. Exactly. And now my body's like, yeah, breakfast is obviously not the most important Imagine the energy you could have in the morning, though. But I still get some energy. Hmm. Do you want to eat? What do you eat? Bananas. That's breakfast! No, but I don't always... I don't have one every morning. Okay. So some mornings you do. So some... No, no, not even... Like I'll have a banana. <laughs> I'll have a banana before you know, go for a workout, or if I'm just like, what, what, what do I do? I, I want something mm. to eat, but I don't want to be full. Well, it is a it is a good fruit for sustained energy. That's the thing. It's true, and it's high in potassium. <laughs> potassium. <laughs> potassium. What do you say? <laughs> potassium. Potassium, bro. You gotta. You never did chemistry. My chemistry teacher called it potassium. Yeah, well, that's why she was a teacher and not a scientist. Do you? <laughs> Do you say calcium or calcium? Calcium! Yeah, I used to say calcium, but now I say calcium. Exactly, so it's potassium and calcium. No, but potassium has two S's, so there's a chance it could be potassium. There's a chance, but... <laughs> you I always exaggerate it. the R. I only say chance, I don't say chance. You say chance. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we were, at a, we were at our friend's 30th birthday mm, the other day. Big milestone? Yeah, big milestone, congrats. Fantastic, um, what are they called? The You know that spread board thing? Uh, a calendar? No, no. <laughs> At the party, you know how they put like a bunch of snacks on the table? Oh, What's a grazing board, a grazing, grazing board. board. I actually learned that that night too. Yeah, I just called same, it a, same. I, I called it the big cheese board. Yeah, I just thought it was table. like a snack table or something. Uh, yeah, well, anyway, our friend uh, Rosh turned 30. And then we were discussing with our other friend, Michael, and he was, we were talking about mosquito bites because we were in this big open area. Mm. Shout out to Michael, by the way. Shout out to Michael. He's shout the inspiration, out, man. inspiration You're an absolute legend. episode. Congrats on the wedding, all that stuff, man. <laughs> Massive shout out Massive to you, Massive shout out. Like, respect. Huge. Mad respect. And then someone was talking about their mosquito bite, and I can't remember which one of these people said it, but if you rub the inside of a banana peel over your mosquito bite, it will help you know, heal, the, heal it, yeah. heal it, you know, take away the irritation, that kind of thing. And then Michael said, dude, you guys should just do a whole episode on bananas. And now here we are. And we all laughed and thought, ah, good one, good one. But then we thought, you know what? 
There is so much to know about bananas. There is so much to know. You know, the history of bananas, the color of bananas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the taste so, of bananas. The thing is, with bananas, they start green. They do start green. Then as they perfectly ripen to be edible, they turn a golden yellow. A golden yellow. A golden and actually, yellow. when they're the green color, that's the perfect time to chop them up and make your banana chips or anything that you use for the cooking. Yeah, that's right. So, And then when it's nice, ripe and golden yellow, it's perfect time to eat them. Mm. And then when they've gone brown, a bit browner, I actually don't mind mine with a bit of brown spots because I find it a bit more sweet. You know, a bit, <laughs> a bit overripe. But that's a good time to make your banana bread and that kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, last week, I had some bananas that were... <laughs> well, this is the thing. Me and Kayla went camping for a couple of days. Yeah. Bought like eight bananas. I have no idea why. We went for two days. Yeah, yeah, Anyway, got back home and, you know, they were sitting in the back of the car. So, obviously, they started to deteriorate a lot quicker. Okay. Because they weren't like in, in the house. Yeah, yeah. They were just in the heat. And... So, my mum messaged me while I was at work and said, you know what? Can I use your dodgy bananas? Dodgy bananas. They were, they were pretty dodgy. Because okay. they were on the way out. Yeah. Because she wanted to make some uh, pikelets. Oh, yeah. And apparently... That's the perfect time to make the pikelets. Well, well, well. And then I thought, oh, absolutely perfect. You can use all... There was, I think, four left. Yeah. So you can use all of them, um, make the pikelets, all good. Anyway, I get home and there's like a full box of pikelets. And there's still three bananas left. <laughs> <laughs> she only used one. <laughs> uh, oh, so what happened to the other three? Well, I don't know. Dude, presume... maybe you gave them to the birds or something. You know, I'm sure you got rid of them in a very lovely way. Yeah. Actually, the banana <laughs> peel is really good for... Uh, Compost and fertilizer. Exactly. That's yeah. why I always um, chuck my banana. If I'm eating it in the car, I always chuck it out the window. Yeah. Because technically um, it's not littering. You're actually helping the environment. Exactly right. Exactly yeah. right. Do you remember our friend Tyson from uh, our old job a while ago? Mm, told at us, the supermarket? At the supermarket. Yeah. He got pulled over by the police because he threw a banana peel out. And then he said, but dude, it's not rubbish. It's a banana peel. It's compost. And then they didn't give him a ticket because he was right. <laughs> I remember him telling that story. It was Quite well, it's up. pretty true when you think about it. It is true. Yeah. Did you know, actually, that the bananas are part of the berry family? Yeah. Yeah. I actually, um, well, not until I researched. <laughs> Dude, see, you learn so much just from Googling a few mm. things. It's a very interesting thing. It's because, it... it's because the seeds are on the inside of the fruit. So when uh, you buy the banana and okay. the seeds, that like middle section of the banana has got the seeds. Yeah. And you know what? Funnily enough, the strawberry is not part of the berry family. What? Because all the seeds are on the outside. So what family are they part of? I, their own. <laughs> <laughs> Just Probably. to, in general, the fruit. Just the fruit. Yeah. The strawberry is part of the strawberry yeah. family. I didn't look into that, so I'm not sure what family the strawberries are part of. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to take it back a notch. Oh, go for it. Back to the very beginning yeah. of time. Go for it. Did you know... Bananas first appeared in written history in the 6th century BC. Wow. That is That's a long time before ago. before we were born. <laughs> what? <laughs> really? That's before our parents were born. <laughs> Can you believe that? Dude, that's shocking. <laughs> BC. <laughs> that's before... 6th century BC. Yeah. So that's... How much is a century? 100 years? 100 years. Yeah. So more than 600 years... Well, around 600 years BC. No, but BC is... Yeah, BC is before... So right now we're in before 80. Before zero. We're in 80. Yeah, before zero. Yeah, So exactly. that's like... So anyway, I can't So right now it's 2019. Yeah. So it's 2019 plus around 600. No, 2019 plus around... Because we don't know what year BC ended. Mm. So BC could have ended, hypothetically, 10 million BC, and then it became zero. So this could be, you know, X amount of years back. No, but it's 6th century BC. 6th century. So it's the 600th year BC. Exactly. So that's very close to the start of 00. zero. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, but it's a long time ago. <laughs> very complicated. <laughs> very long time ago. Okay, okay, okay. So it was recorded in, uh, in history in the 6th century BC. Where yeah. was it recorded? Well, that is unknown. Yeah, that's, I'm not surprised. Possibly, from what I read... Possibly the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. Hieroglyphs, yeah, hieroglyphs. That's the one. Yeah, 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 classic. Dude, that must have been some nice uh, nice discovery. Mm. Um, well, did you know the common, the, the, 
the like the common commercial banana that we have now is the Cavendish. Mm. It's general. It's mo. It's pretty much everywhere, even in Australia. The Cavendish is the most common, you know, banana that we all yeah. eat. The commercial banana. But before that, it was a different banana. Did you know? Was it those small ones? No. So it was called the Michelle Gros banana. Interesting. Oh, sorry, the Gros Michelle banana. Spelled G R O S, whatever. Were they if, like same size or something? Yeah, so or? they looked the same, but they went extinct. They really? pretty much went extinct. Those, those bananas, it was, that and that that was the most common, you know, commercial banana at that time. And around eighteen sixties, it it stopped. They it stopped growing. That's so, so strange. You can still get them in in you know Southeast Asian countries. They're really rare. They say they're really rare, but apparently. They taste sweeter and they're a bit more creamier. Apparently, they taste better than the Cavendish bananas. But today. if they got extinct, how are they now? Like, well, I, I don't think extinct is the right word, but they it stopped growing in mass amounts. Yeah, and then they might be, have found them on like random islands. Yeah, so the Cavendish is like the new strain kind of thing that they um, they got to grow. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so they say you know those banana lollies which you love. Yeah. Yeah, those those foamy banana lollies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Apparently, that fake banana flavor is very close to that banana's taste. Interesting. Because fake banana doesn't taste like the bananas we eat. Nah, not really. Yeah, so apparently, that's what it is. But maybe it should be our mission next time we go to one of these countries. We'll try and find the Gros Michel banana. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. That'll be an interesting um, task. Yeah. Maybe we should go on a trip just to find them. Just to find the banana. Should we? There's actually this YouTube channel. It's called The Weird Fruit Guy or something. And he travels really? around the world and eats weird fruits and just reviews them. So all these random looking fruits. Yeah, that is yeah. that's interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Might have to have a watch. What's his name? It was something along the lines of the interesting fruit guy or the fruit travel guy or oh, the weird okay. fruit guy. Have we'll you have seen the it. guy that takes his piano traveling with him? What? That's yeah. awesome. I love that Some stuff. Some guy who takes his piano and like just plays it in all these random places in the world. Is it just one guy? Yeah. Because I know this other channel, The Piano Guys. One plays a piano, one plays a cello. Oh, no, no, it's different to that. It's like <sighs> one guy, but he takes his piano, like, all these different countries. He's been to so many countries, and he just plays in random places. Is it, is it one of those big grand pianos? Yeah. Whoa! Yeah. That's why it's insane, because, like, is how do you insane. even travel with that? Where? What's the most out there place he's taken it to? I don't know. I haven't watched too much, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, but... saw, I just saw some, like, highlight clips, and I was like, wow, this is just insane. Oh my god, good on him. Does he yeah. actually play it or does he just Yeah, he plays. It? No, no, he plays, he plays. <laughs> no, good on him, good yeah, on him. He's a professional. I'm all about that piano. Um, life. did you know that get this right? Portuguese sailors introduced bananas to the Americans, bringing them from West Africa in the 16th century, right? Yeah. Bananas first became popular with the masses at the 1876 Philadelphia Centennial Celebration. Where they were sold wrapped in foil for ten cents per banana. Wrapped in foil? Was it mm. open wrapped in foil, or just they just wrapped a banana in foil? I presume they wrapped it in foil to kind of preserve it because wow, you know hey. they go off in a week or whatever. Eighteenth century? It, yeah, it no, sixteenth century. Oh, sixteenth century. Yeah. Wow. So hey. and they became yeah like popular with the masses in eighteen seventy six. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is actually not that long ago. That's when you, when you think about yeah it. when you think about it, it's not that long ago. Mm. It's about. 300 years? Yeah. 400 years? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty recent. Mm, pretty recent, yeah. I wonder what the age of other fruits would be compared to that. Yeah. That so you would know, be good to know. You know how the banana's got a curved shape? Yeah. Do you know what that is? The curved shape? Yeah. Um, no. So <laughs> <laughs> it happens with a lot of plants. So when you think about it, I remember touching on this in chemistry too. But when a plant grows, a reason why a plant grows up is because it's growing towards the source of, source of light. So it's, it's trying to grow towards okay. the sun. Yep. So that's the same thing with bananas. Because they're on the tree and they're growing down, it's curving up because it's trying to grow back towards the sun. Ah, that makes yeah. sense. It's called... Uh, but obviously it's not strong enough to fully curve. No, exactly. That's why there's just a slight angle because that's it's trying so to reach the sun. It's called phototrophy. Wow. Phototrophy. <laughs> You learned that in what? Biology? In, uh, yeah, sorry, biology, not chemistry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. F sorry, fo yeah, so it's called phototropism. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's quite yeah. interesting. It's very interesting. But I, I didn't know, I never knew that's why the banana had the curve. I just thought 
it's just a curved fruit, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Uh, well. Yeah, so that's that's another sort of uh, chemistry slash biology thing. Going back to the whole the Asia thing, apparently bananas were um, the first cultivated fruit, and the first banana farms were located in Southeast Asia. Oh well, yeah, they do grow uh, most of them. Actually, I've got here. India is the highest s- seller of bananas, contributing yeah, because to, to they uh, have like a billion people that live there. Yeah, two billion. Is it? Is it two billion? Or is no. China two billion? It China might, has think... a little bit more. I think it's around a billion. Yeah, it'd be a yeah. billion slash a bit more. But yeah, they produce the most bananas than any other country in the planet. And they account for about 28% of the worldwide crop. Wow. Yeah, yeah. China's, China's number two. So it's India than China. Oh, you don't know? Sorry? Percentage for China? Not, uh, oh, percentage for China is 10%. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. a big difference. Huge difference. Yeah. It's not that um that different with the population though, but you know, yeah. with the banana population, it's gigantic. Yeah, that's pretty hectic. So you know, a bunch of bananas is called a hand. Really? Yeah, it's a hand of bananas, and then a single banana is a finger. Really? Yeah. So you buy a, like a hand of bananas, and you eat a finger at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know those bananas with the red tip? Yeah. What's the go with them? That's like a fake red tip. It's like a wax red tip or something. Really? Yeah. So what's the point of it? I, I don't know. I think it's to distinguish the difference or it's a farmer's thing that they do. Mm. I don't even know if that's just in Australia or if they do it worldwide as well. Yeah, it's pretty random. Yeah. So do you actually like bananas? I do like bananas. I remember there was a point where I would never really think, oh yeah, I feel like a banana. Mm. But these days I could eat a banana just be like, oh, it's a good snack. I'll have a banana. Yeah, it's not like you go, oh, I really want one because I love the taste. Yeah. Because I mean... The taste is, yeah, it's average. The taste know? is good. but It's average. Do you ever have those bananas where it's it's not fully ripe, and then you eat it, and your teeth feel all squeaky? Yeah. Yeah. I hate it's that. It's all like foamy and stuff. Yeah, it's like, oh. Ugh. You anyway. know a lot of people can't actually eat bananas, because mm. like, they start like, their mouth like, starts foaming and tingling and stuff. Oh, like the full allergy sort of thing? Yeah. A lot of people have it. I know yeah, a fair few people. I, 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 know, I know a couple of people as well. They're, or the wherever the banana touches around their lips, it'll go red and a little bit swollen. Mm. Yeah, yeah, And then yeah. it just feels, for them it feels like fuzzy and, yeah, it's yeah, so I'm, strange. Yeah. But I don't know why it's a lot of people. It's We're interested common. to know why that actually happens. Yeah, there must be, it must be one of the chemical compounds inside yeah. the banana itself or something. Yeah. Yeah. But it is quite common, you're right. All right, I have seen it quite a lot. Yeah. And do you remember when we were working at the supermarket, right? Yeah. The bananas were obviously pretty popular. Yeah. Do you remember when they had um I think cuz the mass the mass banana popular um the mass banana growth in Australia is like Queensland area. Queensland, yeah, that's yeah. right. So when they had all the issues, I think it was about four or five years ago, yeah. when they had mass like cyclones and wiped out all the banana trees, you remember that? Yeah, yeah. And then the price of bananas just went like crazy. Oh, they skyrocketed. Yeah. And we we actually weren't getting that many delivered to our store. Yeah, exactly. They were being very sparse with the delivery around the chain. Yeah, and they'd run out straight away. Because I remember standard cost is like two two fifty. a Yeah, kilo. I'd say max I've seen is four. four. Yeah. And then it went up to like, Six, yeah, seven dollars a kilo. I remember seeing the price tag, and I was thinking, "Is that a mistake? Is that meant to be something yeah. else?" Because insane. Have you ever had a ladyfinger banana? Possibly. They're those really small bananas. Oh yeah, yeah. And they're a lot yeah, sweeter, like them. small and chunky. Yeah. Um, because those are a bit more. I don't know if exotic's the right word, but a little bit more exotic, mm. and they're a bit more pricey. So I was thinking, I think they've accidentally made a mistake with the prices. Yeah. But no, it was all right. It was a Cavendish banana, which was super expensive. Cavendish. A Cavendish banana. This guy loves his, loves his names of the bananas. There was actually a scientific name of the banana that I found, but I couldn't pronounce it, so I didn't write it down. Yeah, I found that as well. <laughs> Try and pronounce Where it. Where was it? Where was it? I had it in my notes. Yeah. The scientific name for the banana is Musa Sapientum, which means... What was with the accent? Fruit of the wise men. Ah, oh, I'm a wise man then. Yes, that's Wealth right. Wealth of knowledge we've got here. Well, you know what they say. Do you also, when you eat a banana, <laughs> do you avoid that last bottom bit? Yeah, always, man. Yeah, I you think always, everyone like, does that. You just like pull off that tone a little bit as you pull the peel. Yeah, it's, it's, a, 
it's that one bit. There's like a crispy bit on the end. It's almost like a branch. I don't know. It's like a little dotted black tail. Yeah, and everyone. <laughs> I swear, everyone hates it. Yeah. Did you do you know that most efficient way to peel a banana is the way that monkeys peel it? Which is so they turn it upside down, then they squeeze the point, and then they peel it, and it literally breaks in half. What? So the peel peels in half, and in one in one peel. The bananas just, you know, blooming from the bottom. Do you know what I mean? So you just, you squeeze the top, you pinch the top. Yep. And you use both your hands at this point. Or, you know, you can still use one hand. You pinch the top and you peel one side, but it's half the peel. So you peel from the bottom of the banana. Yeah, flip it, pinch the pinch the peel, and then peel. <laughs> and then you've peeled half the peel to the side. So you've only got one more peel left. So instead of four or five, like, ch 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 you're doing one, two, mm. eat. Yeah. Interesting. So I, whenever I peel, I always try and get four. Four. I feel four like four peels. is right. One, two. Because yeah. you know, if you're looking at, if you're watching like a cartoon or something, yeah. and someone's holding a banana, it's always got four peels. <laughs> like that's. Is that what you? That's where you take your inspiration from. <laughs> yeah. You want to, it does look. It's nice to look. It's satisfying to look at when it is four. Exactly. It's like four a nice the exact open, same size. Yeah. When it's five, and then one of them's like really skinny, I can't handle that. I, I throw you, it out and get another one. Do you fold? <laughs> <laughs> you fold it back up, put it back in the bowl. Yeah. Uh, you know what I've heard? Make pie clips out of that one. <laughs> <laughs> but just use the one. Just use the one. Just Leave one. the rest. <laughs> if um, if you keep your bananas with your other fruits in the bowl, it'll. Speed up the ripening. Exactly. Yeah, I've because the banana well. releases these pheromones, which, you know... Yeah, and that's why when... That's why they sell these, like, banana stands, which I actually have at home. Oh, well, well. You, so you, you hang the banana on the banana stand, so it's away from the other fruit. Yeah. So then it doesn't, like, go off really quickly. Yeah, Because if yeah, you yeah. sit it with the other fruits, like, yes, it will ripen quick, but then it will go also off very quickly. That's quick. true. And it would it would make the other fruits go... A lot off, off, off as well, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. So you should always keep your bananas separate from your other fruits. Yeah. Have you ever <laughs> stored your bananas in a refrigerator? Uh, possibly. I've never done it, but I remember going to someone's house and opened the fridge and there was bananas. And I was like, It would what? probably preserve it. Maybe, but it just it sounded so weird. Have you ever frozen your bananas? No. Like you peeled them and then you froze them to use in smoothies or something. No. That's haven't. quite effective, you know? Is it? Yeah. Because what, like it, chop it up and freeze it? Chop it up and freeze it, and then when you make a smoothie, put it back in. Interesting. And then it gives it that, you know, that smoothie texture. It's yeah. a bit thicker, it's cold, it's icy. No foamy fuzziness. No foamy fuzziness, unless you're allergic, <laughs> of course. <laughs> That's Just right. take your OP pen with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they're that lethal, so... So, did you know, bananas are one of the most popular fruits in the American diet? Yeah. I did hear about that. And bananas grow on plants that are officially considered a herb. Yeah, I heard about that too. Mm. I was, I was, can you eat, can you eat the other part of it as a herb? Well, that is unclassified. Well, fair enough. Fair well, enough. I don't know. Basically, <laughs> for you, it's unclassified so far. Exactly. <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> you know, fifty-one percent of all bananas are eaten for breakfast. Wow. So more than half of the bananas eaten. Uh, well, there you go. You're doing it wrong. I'm doing, I'm doing it wrong. You are doing no, it I'm wrong. No, I'm just part of the other 49%. Touche. Touche. Yeah, exactly. Another crazy fact. Bananas float in water because they are less dense in comparison. Oh, wow. As do, I believe, apples and there was one other fruit. Watermelons as well, I think. Watermelons float? Yeah. That's more shocking than bananas floating. I know. Because they're so heavy. Exactly. You know, humans share about 50% of our DNA with bananas. With bananas? Yeah. 50%? We're, we're half banana. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah. I think uh, the closest animal we, that we share DNA with is chimps, chimpanzees. Mm, yeah. 99% or something. Something something quite high up. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but 50% with bananas. I, I wonder. I wonder how. That is a lot. I'd be wanting to know what part. Maybe bananas is. have personalities. <laughs> <laughs> they could it's possible uh, well you do get different shapes of bananas sometimes they're yeah. long sometimes they're you know short if you and get ones that try harder they're probably more curved yeah because they tried growing harder towards the sun and then they try harder to get ripe so they go brown quicker yeah. they get all the brown spots but it's quite an interesting thing um, 
It's there, just very, very strange. There was a man in India that once ate 81 bananas. Guess how long? Well, if it's some crazy thing in India, 81 bananas, I'm going to say 10 minutes? Whoa, dude. How long does it take Okay, half an hour, half an hour. Yeah, it was half an hour. Oh, really? Yeah, it was 81 bananas in half an hour. 81. Think about how many hands of bananas up? that is. I didn't, I didn't check that. Probably. Do you have the video? <laughs> we should try and find the video. Yeah. I don't know if there was a video, but he ate 81 bananas in half an hour. That is absolutely cooked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, dude, one banana takes me, you know, a minute if I'm eating it yeah. speedy. Wait, maybe no he to... was eating those little bananas. Even then. Oh, you mean like he's just swallowing it whole? He could have just been swallowing it whole. Like... Nah, it can't be. You can't have 81 whole bananas sitting in your stomach. Yeah, he's definitely you can't. chewed it. There's no way. It's like when you, when you, you know the bread challenge? Eat a whole slice of bread in 45 seconds. It's yeah. so difficult. You can't yeah. do it. I want to try that though. Try it. We tried every method. We tried biting it. Like one, two, three. We tried like squeezing it, shoving it in our mouth. We tried drinking water with it. No, you can't drink water. You can't drink yeah, water. Yeah, you can't drink water. Because uh, it just dries up your mouth yeah. instantly. It's quite a difficult task. Well, did you know that some cultures, most commonly Japan, Use the fiber in the banana plant to make fabric and sometimes even paper. Oh, whoa. It's like, a, it's like how they make, you know, like the parchment mm. with the old animal skin. Does this that is mean vegan that, friendly. Does that mean that technically you could use 50% of a human to a human's fiber to make fabric? Because we're fifty percent the same. Is it possible? <laughs> that makes zero sense. It's probably possible. We have like fifty percent of a banana. We have skin anyway. You can just peel the skin off to make fabric and paper. Well, there you go. Well, there you go. That's then, how we relate that's, to bananas. That's how we relate because we can both be made into fabric. <laughs> <laughs> if you got warts, if you got warts on your skin, apparently, apparently, I haven't tried this myself. Obviously, if done daily. Running the inside of banana peel can re- help remove the wart. Really? Yeah, yeah. Man, it must like be because the inside of, the whole... of a banana peel is very um, Ve- oh, yeah. very medically good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very. I've got a lot of things here. You know what? This isn't a banana peel though, but apparently, and I've one hundred percent never tried this because I love my movie collection. Okay. But apparently, if you have like a scratched DVD disc. Or, you know, CD. If it's scratch and it's skipping, if you take a banana and rub it over the disc and then clean it off, it will somehow repair the scratches wow. and the disc will play smoothly. Be good to see if we could do that. Let's, we do you have any scratch it. discs? I've got plenty of scratch discs. Really? It just happens. Any of them, like, you... are jumping? Yeah, yeah. Oh, why don't we try it? We can try it. Should but... we try it? Let's try it. I don't know if it's the banana peel. Look, we can research this. But we can try it. All right. Yeah. We will get to it at some point. Next next episode, or in the next couple episodes, we'll let you know how we go with the disc scratch repair yeah. with a banana. And if it doesn't work, don't try it at home. So don't mm. try it at home yet until we try it. Exactly. Let, you know. let us try it first. We don't want to ruin your discs even more than they already are. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's exactly right. The inside of a banana peel can also be used, as we said before, you know, mosquito bite treatment. Burn treatment, mm. just lightly rubbing it over for burn treatment. Yeah. I don't know what degree of burns. I'd assume probably just first degree burns. Mm. I wouldn't want to go rubbing a banana peel on a third degree burn that is already yeah, if the most painful thing if ever. If all your skin's already peeling off, don't put a banana peel on it. Don't put more peel on the <laughs> peel. <laughs> Polishing silver. Really? Yeah, I've heard this one a few times before. Wow. Polishing silver, just rubbing it and then you clean it. It helps polish it. Whitening tea. Oh. Yeah. Rubbing that inside a banana peel all along your teeth. It, But I feel like that will give you that squeaky feeling. I'll still give it a go. Give it a go. Give I wouldn't a go. mind a free whitening of teeth. Cleaning and polishing leather shoes. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We can give that shot at two. We can try all of these. We literally can. <laughs> we can see the results next time. Yeah. Um, and like we said before, great fertilizer. Yep. Yeah, interesting. A lot of good uses. A lot of good uses. So, have you ever eaten a banana sandwich? What? Or a banana roll? What's in a banana roll? Okay, so obviously you haven't. So, what what it is is 
You get a banana that is... Wait, wait, is this your own invention? Well, I wouldn't have thought so. My mum used to make it for me when I was a kid. Maybe it's her own invention. Hit us up with the recipe. Alright, so you can either have a fully ripened or it can be slightly dodgy as well. Okay, like your pikelet bananas? Exactly, yeah. Okay. So it's actually perfect for those kinds of bananas, like yeah. the dodgy ones. Right? Okay. So what you do is, you get the banana, you chop it up into probably like three or four pieces, put it in a bowl, mm -hmm. and then you get a fork and you like press down and like keep like like pressing down all across and so you mash pushing it, it around. So you mash it up into like mashed up banana. <laughs> yeah. Then you put it on a piece of bread. Yeah. Put another piece of bread on top. Yeah. So it's like a sandwich. Yeah. And then you eat it. Wow. That it's is, pretty good. That's amazing. I used to have it as a kid all the time because when I was playing sport all the time, obviously the sustained energy from the banana was what yeah. I needed. Yeah, exactly. And then right. having it with bread, filling, filling, sam uh, filling, like banana sandwich, filling meal for a young kid. Yeah, it, it's, it's this interesting thing. Mm. It's like, I think as kids, we would just put anything in bread and just have it as a sandwich. Oh, so true. So it, it I just had peanut sense. butter sandwiches. <laughs> they were the best. Peanut man. butter? Peanut butter. That's normal. Oh, okay. Peanut butter sandwich. Fine. <laughs> Fair like enough. That's something so out there. <laughs> it's literally made to put in sandwiches. No, no, no. It's made to have on toast. No, it's not. Yeah. Peanut butter on toast. I think that is... A newer thing compared to a peanut butter what? sandwich. What? Yeah. No way. It's a spread. You put it on toast. Yeah, but you put it on bread as well. Toast, bread is the same thing. So you put it on bread and you have it as a sandwich. A peanut butter sandwich is the most normal Come sandwich on, thing ever. Come on, man. Yeah, 100%. Come on. Have you ever had a peanut butter and jam sandwich? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Not for a long time, though. I used to have them all the time as a kid. Maybe I'll have one today. Yeah, let's have one today. I don't know if I have the ingredients. <laughs> peanut butter and jam sandwich. Maybe another day. In America, a peanut butter jelly sandwich. So Yeah. 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 So American jelly. listeners, tell us, what is the go with peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? Yeah. Do you actually eat them? Or is it just a stereotype? We want to know. We already know. I used to, <laughs> I used to live there. Oh my God. <laughs> that's you where, were like three. That, you but that's couldn't where even I was eat sandwiches. You didn't even was, have teeth yet. I was introduced. I wasn't three. I was five, six, seven. Was it? Yeah, I was five. Oh, I was five, six, seven. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. So, so did was, you have them? I was introduced to it there, and I've had them ever since. So the serious question with that is: Yeah. Do you have to make the jelly? No, it's not jelly. Jelly. Jelly is what they call jam. Oh, <laughs> what? This is a revel. This is an absolute revelation. Are before. you serious? It's like that. You know that jam that you have. That's not. It's not the conservative jam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is that what you call it? Conserve. Con yeah, yeah, yeah. Concept. Whatever. Yeah. It's not the one with the, those pieces. It's like that jam that's. Just jam. Like a full thick spreaded jam. Thick spread jam, yeah, yeah. yeah. That that not really fake, but fake jam. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so that's what it actually that's is. That's what jelly is. This is an absolute revelation. It's not actually Someone relate to me that did anyone else think it was actually jelly? <laughs> so surely. It's not they don't, someone back me up there, please. Make the gelatin, put it in the fridge, <laughs> take it out of the fridge. That's what I was thinking. Like what is, the these people are crazy. They're taking their sandwiches way too serious. Nah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> It's jam. Jelly is jam. Strawberry oh my jelly. Golly. Strawberry jam. This is a revelation. Yeah, it's actually mind blowing. So no wonder you wanted to know if peanut butter jelly was an actual thing in America. <laughs> it's jam. It's yeah, all well just then jam. obviously it is. Yeah. Because it's pretty easily accessible. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh it's man. You you used to also get those jars where it would be a swirl spread. Mm. So there's peanut butter and jelly inside the one jar. No way. So you could go one scoop. That's spread. even easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh Actually, gosh. very innovative. Classic Americans, though. Yeah. Making things, you make <laughs> having to do less work the better. <laughs> Dude, that's what they say, man. Work nah, smarter, not harder. That's us as well. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's everyone. It's everyone all around put together. Very true. So did you know this has nothing to do with bananas technically? But okay. The fastest marathon ever run by a competitor dressed as a fruit was 2 hours and 58 minutes and 20 seconds. This was in Barcelona on March 6, 2011. The man was Patrick Whiteman from the uh, United Kingdom. And he was dressed as a banana. Good on him. One of those big banana mascot suits, I assume. We would assume so. Dude, imagine running that long in that suit. You'd just be sweating non-stop. Imagine running that long anyway. Yeah. I've never done a marathon. Like I said last time, I would never just run for fun. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to do a marathon one day in my life. You've never done a marathon? No, I haven't done a full-on marathon. What's the longest sort of marathon slash race thing you've run? Oh, I've done this 13-kilometer um, run heaps of times. Oh, snap. 
Dude, I did a 30, 30 kilometer. Yeah, but maybe it was thirty. Did you run? No way. <laughs> I walked most of it. So it was this Sydney. It was a Sydney city surf thing, and it's for charity. So you donate to charity, and you, they block off the whole city road. Like I don't know. It's all. It's this whole area around Sydney, and then you run or walk or do whatever around yeah. this road. It's all blocked off. So there's thousands of people. Anyway, I think it was thirteen kilometers. I think. Um, so, well, how long did it take you? I think about two or three hours. Two or three hours, and did you walk most of it? Walked a lot of it, yeah. Walked a lot of it, yeah. It was probably, probably 13, around yeah. 13, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so, because it's a huge, gigantic event, every, you know, couple of kilometers, there's another DJ or something doing a huge set. Um, there's all these stalls where you can buy food. There's all these, uh, you know, all these other sort of stalls. You can kind of buy things, but they're just sort of, you know, things set up for your entertainment. So about one kilometer into the run, I see this ice cream truck oh, and, I went my. and bought an ice cream cone. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be kidding. I wasn't the only one doing it. There was a lot of people doing it. Genius Did you have to wait in guy. line? Nah, nah, nah. I was, there was you know, a few people scattered around, but I bought an ice cream. Oh, that is hilarious. I was eating it along the run. I've got a video somewhere. Oh, that you. is hilarious. <laughs> uh, well, that's oh. the most I've got from running. I'm pretty sure I would have eaten a banana before that too. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You have to have that sustained energy. Sustained energy, exactly. Did you know there are more songs written about bananas than any other fruit? Wow. Yeah. I can't think of one. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. Is that your song? No. What's a, what's that? This is bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. Oh, you know that song? Is that Who's what they're spelling? I never really paid attention to it. Oh, Big Banana by... um. That DJ, the Australian DJ, Havana Brown. Big banana, big banana. I don't even know that one. You'll know the song. It's a quite an annoying song. Oh, it was Hollaback Girl by Gwen Stefani. Oh, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. This is bananas. That's why yeah. there ain't no Hollaback Girl. Exactly. Banana. But Big Banana. So how many songs do you say about bananas? There's just more written about bananas than any other fruit. Mm. So I think it's because of the name Banana. Banana. It's, just, uh, it's fun to say. It's a fun say. It's fun to spell, evidently. Mm. <laughs> B A N A N A S. That's right. Uh, Did you know there's a TV show about about bananas? It's about bananas. A TV show. What's yeah. it called? Bananas in pajamas. <gasps> there is. I don't remember <laughs> that. B one or B two? Who's your favourite? Oh, it's got to be B two. Yeah, he's the underdog, right? I don't know anything about them, but my birthday's on the second, so B2. Well, touche. 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 I would pick too B2. Good. So far, too good. So far, too good. Too good <laughs> to be true. To be or not to be. I would, <laughs> I would pick B2 because B1 just has an advantage straight up. Why he is must that? have been born first, so he was B1. Okay. But just for being number one, number two is automatically the underdog. That is true. Because he's always true. just the second one. Mm. So unless B1, you know gets eaten, he's going to always be V2. Hmm. That yeah. was like me and my brother, you know? I was the number two child, but I prevailed as the underdog at everything. Well done. <laughs> Tim's actually invited me to snow sports. Really? Yeah, because I said I love snow sports. What so is he's, it? he's going to take me snowboarding. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. going. You want to come? I'm going as well, yeah. No, you're not invited. <laughs> yeah, he invited me. Nah, I've been seriously trying to go for the last few years, but... It's nah, so we'll, hard. We'll, we'll go this time. We can record a whole episode while learning to snowboard. Mm. Yeah. We can do it on the slopes. On the slopes. How's that? You hear me screaming all the way down. Yeah, that's right. And you hear him crash into a bunch of kids and... I'm not going to crash into anyone. Oh, man. I'm I a fast bad. learner. I'm a fast learner. You should put some padding, like, all over you just for when you crash into people. I'll actually... I'll grow my body hair out. So, <laughs> underneath, <laughs> if I crash into anything, there'll be that padding. Yeah, very Plus, true. it'll be winters, so it'll keep me warm. Too. But you know what we'll have to do? Because when you do go snowboarding and skiing, you're out there for quite a while, so we will need to have some bananas for sustained, sustained energy. energy. And high potassium. Yes, he's got it. I he's just, learned well. to make you happy, but in my very mind, well, very I was well. thinking potassium. Ah, good learning. Let man. us know your thoughts, guys. Tell us if you say potassium or potassium. Yeah, it'd be good to know. Yeah, it could very just be to a tomato-tomato thing. Mm, could be. Yeah. Could be. Or a banana banana. <laughs> <laughs> Toronto. <laughs> banana. Toronto. Could be one of those things. Um, but yeah, so bananas are a fantastic, fantastic fruit. One of the best, especially for the energy consumed. Yeah. 
Um, the lollies are pretty good as well. I know. You're, of, I think I know. out of maybe anyone I know, you're the biggest fan of those lollies. Mm. If the lollies, I'm not sure if they're everywhere in the world, but think about a. Uh, it's like a hard sort of foamy lolly. Mm. Uh, it's not. It's not really a gummy, but it's got that artificial banana flavor. And mm. yeah. But the thing is, I know a lot of people don't eat bananas yeah. because in recent years the cost of like a packet of lollies has gone up. It used yeah. to be like two dollars for a packet of lollies. Now yeah. it's gone up to like three, three fifty, sometimes four dollars, which is absolutely ridiculous. But a packet of bananas is still two dollars. That's true. Which but makes me think no one eats them. No, no one eats them and not many people like them. I don't mind it. I'll eat it. I, I don't mind it, but it's not gonna be my first choice of lolly. Yeah, like if someone gun to your head, eat this to live, like you would eat it. Well, I would eat more than one because I <laughs> You, they are they're pretty good man yeah they're pretty good haters okay. gonna hate I like them haters gonna hate yeah each each of their own mm. but real bananas getting back to real bananas I love them I know you love them you used to have one at least every day at you least you probably still have one every day yeah I still do um, have I'm one a, with uh, with yogurt every day with yogurt that's a great combo see mm. that's another thing I love my bananas in desserts and in other foods mm. like banana pancakes these banana pie you've been talking about sound fantastic they're really good. So I would love that. There's still some left. Do you want one? <laughs> There's still... How big was this one banana? No, what I'm telling you, because this, this is the thing. Apparently, you only need one banana, and it makes, like, heaps. Wow. Yeah. Because you said there's a whole there was a whole box of pikelets. Yeah. Like from the one banana. Heaps. Like, um, if you used all four bananas, you would have, like, a, a room full of pikelets. <laughs> like, you know that episode of SpongeBob where he makes all these patties, and the whole kitchen is full? Full, full of the patties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it'll yeah. be like that. Wow, just from one banana. Yeah. Man, the ends, the, the length you could go. I know, yeah. I know. Because I think the banana's there just for the flavouring. So you yeah. don't actually need a lot of it. If you had more, yeah. then it would be, the pikelet would be too thick. Yeah. It wouldn't work. Yeah. Well, one of my favourite original crepe uh, toppings is banana and Nutella. Mm. Yeah. What about banana split? Love banana split. Mm. Love it. It's Very such nice. a great idea. Remember that time, uh, I think we both had one at Pancake Parlour? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's quite, it's a shareable dessert. We're like, why not? So many good things you can do with bananas, guys. Keep it up, you know. Uh, Eat bananas every day. We'll continue to eat them. Tell us your favorite type of banana. Tell us how potassium is pronounced. (laughs) Please tell us, because we need to settle this debate. Yeah, we just won't Google it, and we'll just take a majority vote. Yeah, Yeah. 100%. Well, thanks again, guys. We really appreciate you guys listening once again. We hope you learned some more about bananas, and we hope you continue to buy hands and fingers of bananas. And make sure you have a banana every day with your yogurt. Or breakfast if you eat breakfast. And you'll definitely live longer. What? Yeah. Okay. You will live <laughs> longer, guys. <laughs> anyway, hit us up on So Far So Good on Instagram. That's where we are most of the time. Yeah. 24-7. Yeah. We've got notifications, obviously, 24-7. Yeah, exactly on. right. Hit us up. Thank you guys again for listening to the and So Far So Good podcast. Later. <laughs>